Okay, seventh grade, lesson 109. This one is on equations with exponents. Now, before we start doing that, I want to show you something really quick. So, for example, if I had this problem, okay, what is my ultimate goal? Do you know? I'm trying to get this by itself, ultimately. But before we get this by itself, we have to keep it with this for now and just move this, right? Do you remember these rules? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we would do is just try to get this by itself. And so this plus one, we move it across the equal. And remember when you move things across the equal, what happens? Changes to the opposite. What's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. So it becomes minus one. See that? And that gets rid of that. So now we have 3x equals 28 minus 1, which is 27. So now the problem says 3 times what equals 27. Now remember, ultimately, we're trying to get this by itself. So this times 3, we're going to move across the equals. And what's the opposite of times 3? Divided. divided by 3. So now x equals 27 divided by 3, and x equals 9. See that? So we ultimately answered 4x. That's what you're trying to do. Now, we're going to look at this same exact problem, but this time we're going to add a square to it. Okay? So, let's look at this one together. 3x squared plus 1 equals 28. Again, exact same problem, but I've added this, which makes it a little bit harder, but just stay with me. So what do you think our first step is? Get the x to the second power. Divided. That's actually going to be our very, very last step. By itself? To get by yourself? Well, our very, very last step is to get the x by itself. But right now it's with the 3 and the square. So we move the 3. So we don't do anything seven. with this yet. Okay, we move that across. Yeah. Minus so minus this minus plus 1 minus minus moves seven. across and becomes minus 1, just like we would normally do things. Okay? So now I've got 3x squared equals 28 minus 1, which is 27. Okay? Now, stay with me. Um, we can do two things. I think the best thing is let's keep the x squared together still for now. The next step is going to be this is 3 times x squared. So I'm going to move this times 3, cross the equal sign, and times 3 becomes divided by 3. So now, get rid of that, now it's x squared equals 27 divided by 3 is 9. Now, is that a little bit easier to see? Okay, now, what is the opposite of squaring something? For example, uh, 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. The opposite of 2 squared is that, square root of. So, you know, the opposite of plus is minus. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. The opposite of square is square rooting. So, how do I get rid of this? I'm going to move it across the equal sign. And because I move this square across the equal sign, what happens? It becomes the square root. It becomes the square root of. That gets rid of that. So, x equals the square root of 9. And what is the square root of 9? What times what? equals 9. We know that 3 times 3 equals 9, so x is 3. Isn't that cool how we did that? So you have to take many, many different steps, but you always follow the same flow. You always move the plus whatever first, then you move the times next, and then lastly you do the square root of it. Okay? So that's kind of how that works. Now, one more thing I want to show you. Could this answer also be a negative 3? Stay with me. Does negative 3 times negative 3 equal a positive 9? Yes, it does. Because um, an even amount of negatives, even amount, two of them, that's an even number of negatives, gives us a positive answer. So, guess what? Not only is x3, but it's also negative 3. So you have to state that now. Okay? So let's, excuse me, let's do some of these problems together. Okay? Here we go. Do this one on your paper with me. Alright? Here we go. 3x squared 
minus 1 equals 47. First step. What do you think? Um, the minus 1 equals plus 1. Okay, it? so we're going to move this. Minus 1 becomes plus 1. That erases that. Okay, so then I get 3x squared equals 48. Mm -hmm. All right, next step. So then it is 3 times. 3 times, and so we're going to get rid of this times 3. All right, and when we move it across the equals, divided by 3, that gets rid of that. Okay, and I don't know what, what 3 and the 48 is, so... 16. 16, good job. Okay, so now I've got x squared equals 16. Okay? But I've still not got my x by itself. Now it's x squared, so what can I do now? What's the opposite of squaring something? I'm going to make it square root of 16. Very good. I move this across to equal, and that gets rid of that. So x equals, what is the square root of 16? 4. 4 times 4 is 16. But could it also be negative 4? Mm -hmm. Negative 4 times negative 4. Two negatives, an even number of negative makes a positive answer, and then 4 times 4 is 16. So yes. So the answer is 4, negative 4. All right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this next one is not harder, but it kind of doesn't make as much sense to your brain. So just stay with me. All right? Write this one down. 2x squared equals 10. Okay? This one doesn't have as many things that we have to do. But what's our first step? There are two no times. Tables. So this says 2 times x squared. So let's take this away. So this times five, 2 five, becomes divided by 2. Very good. 5. x squared equals five. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay. Now, get rid of this. Squared, five. Right. So we want to get rid of the square. So we're going to move it across the equal and it becomes the opposite, which is square root of. And so now x equals the square root of 5. We don't know the square root of 5. So the answer is just square root of 5. Because it's an irrational number. It's kind of like pi. Keeps going on and on and on forever and ever and ever. So you just have to leave it a square root of 5. Now, it can also be negative square root of 5. You always have to include the negative. Okay? Now, pay attention because the negative is on the outside. There's only very few times that the negative will be on the inside. And that's only when you have something that has a 3 up here or an odd number of things. And we'll learn about that later. Okay? So, like, you understand that pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right, now listen to this. This kind of switches gears just a tad. Listen to this. Five less than what number squared is 20? Did you hear that? I'm going to write it out. Five less than, five less than what number squared is 20? That's the question. All right, so help me write this. Negative five. Okay, remember when you see five less than? That always goes to um, uh, the, the second side. part of the okay. problem. I got it here, I think. Okay. So, so yes, what number squared? So, what number W squared equals 20? Almost, almost, because it's five less than that. So, minus five. Okay. You see what I'm saying? This part always goes second. Not necessarily on the other side of the equals. It just needs to go second. This 5 less than because we're coming up with whatever this is, and then it's 5 less than that. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, what number squared 5 less than is equals 20? So, that's what you should have come up with. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Alright, so then let's come up with what W is. Are you working it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Did you figure it out already? No. Okay, I have it either. So, I'm going to move my minus 5 to make it plus 5. Okay. That's and then the square, I have to move it across. Yeah, and the square, square, square root. Square root. So, W equals, what is the square root of 25? 5. five. But, it can also be negative 5. Because negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Yay! So, we figured it out. Good job. Okay? All right, let's do, um, we got two more problems. Now, this one is example five. I'm going to come back to example four. Example five says this, solve. All right, and here's what they got. X over three equals 12 over X. Now, do you remember how to do these kind of problems? 
maybe in a while, that you actually are going to cross multiply. So this times this equals this times this. So x times x becomes so four is x squared. And then 12 times 3 equals 36. See what I did? So I do x times x, which equals x squared. 3 times 12. So this is square root of 36, though. Yeah. So now I've got x squared equals 36. And then I want to move this across the equal, so that makes it like that. And x equals the square root of 36. So x equals 6. Which but is, yeah. it also equals negative 6. Because negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Okay. Now this last problem, I saved it for the end because it's hard. Um, but I want you to see what I'm going to do. Okay. So you may even want to draw this on your um, paper. Okay. You've got a square. And inside that square, we've got another square that's turned. And it kind of looks like a diamond. Okay. Okay. Now. Listen to what I'm about to say. In this figure, the area of the larger square equals four units squared. So the area of this big one equals four units. And this area is twice the amount of the smaller one. Okay, so... What does that tell me the sides were for this large one? What is the area of Area the is length times width or side times side if it's a but square. What, did they tell us the one with the smaller one? I didn't know. We're gonna, let's do that in just a minute. Um, so what are the sides going to be if I get a 4? A 4 a 4. The perimeter is 4? No, no. The area is 4. So something oh. times something equals so it's 4. So 2. 2. And because it's a 2, we know it's a 2 because it's a square. Yeah. And squares always have to have the same length. If it was a rectangle, then they wouldn't be the same length. Okay? Now stay with me. If this is 2 and this is 2, stay with me. Now here's what it says. The area of the big square is twice the area of the smaller. So I'm going to write an equation. Okay? Almost. That's what I thought, too. Because if I put a 1 and a 1, 1 times 1 still only equals 1. And that 1, 1, if I do twice the amount of 1, I only get that. I don't get 4. So, even though that kind of makes sense in your brain, when you do 1 times 1, you get 1. And if that is twice the amount of this, that's twice times 2, then I still only get 2. So, that's not it. So, I have to come up with an equation. That's actually what I did in my brain first, what you just did. Okay? So, we have to come up with an equation. So, I'm going to say, we know that the smaller one's area times 2 equals the larger area. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So, we have a smaller amount, and then we times it, it's twice as much and then that equals the larger. Because the larger one is twice as much as the smaller one. Okay? Are you with me how I came up with that solution? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, what is the larger's area? Four. Right? Four. Now, stay with me. Okay? So, the... Um, the area of this smaller one times 2 is going to equal 4, right? So, how do I come up with a signal, so to speak, for the small? How do I come up with a representation of the area of the small? Side times side? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to put S squared. That represents the area of my smaller triangle. Or right, square. You understand? Mm -hmm. So S square, side times side, and then we're going to double that, which will give us 4. Understand what I'm doing? Okay, so our equation, I'm going to rewrite this instead of it putting S squared times 2. Well, I, let's just leave it like that. Okay, so now I'm trying to get S squared by itself. So this times 2, move across the equals, and it becomes divided by 2. Right? 
So then 4 divided by 2 is 2. But I still have my s squared. You with me? So now I'm going to try to get my square, get rid of it, so I get s equals. That tells us how much the side is. I'm going to move this across the equal. Mm -hmm. So what's the opposite of squaring? Square root. Oh, so s equals the square root of 2. Do we know what the square root of 2 is? No. So s equals square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. You get it? That was kind of hard. So this actually would be square root of 2, square root of 2. Isn't that weird? That's the length of the side. Mm -hmm. Which square root of 2 is probably 1 point something. So each of these is 1 point something. Yeah. But we leave it as square root of 2 because we don't know. One point something keeps going on and on and on forever because it's irrational. See why we leave it as square root of 2? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's lesson 109.